So looking at the extruder assembly first, we can clearly see... Hmm. Hello everyone, Adam here from CRT. Today we're looking at my custom 3D printer, specifically the extruder assembly, the bit that rides along those x-axis rails and holds the oozy, oozy, hotty, oozy, squishy bit. I've already looked over the frame and the y-axis in some other videos, or well, some, two other videos, a couple of other videos. If you haven't watched those already, go check them out here. Right, let's get on with it. So this is an up, 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 up. Before we talk about the extruder assembly, there's one thing I want to mention. At the top here, one rail. At the bottom, the other rail. And we're looking along the axis. This is the stepper motor in the middle. If it's too far to the left, then you get a moment on the bearings. If it's too far to the right, you get a moment on the bearings during the change of speed, change of direction. So in order to increase the speed of the printer, what I'd like to do is move that center of mass directly below the rails. That will effectively negate any moment caused by the mass of the stepper motor. So this is an unfixed assembly of the second design. So let's start with the bearings at the top. Inside here we have two brass bearings. They're impregnated with oil, so they're self-lubricating. The small yellow piece here is just a clamp to hold them together. The inner diameter of here is slightly less than the outer diameter of the bearing. So as you push them together, it holds them tight. In this case, not quite tight enough. Let's have a look now at this front plate. It's basically to hold the stepper motor to the frame and also the extruder to the stepper. The bearings, as you can see, mount top and bottom. This part is for the belt, so the belt slips in, goes round, and then you use a zip tie. You can see there's a little cutout here so that the wires don't interfere as you slide the stepper motor in. So on the inside here, you can see three parts that look like a nut trap. It sort of works the same, but I'm using a hex head screw. So the hex head screw sits on the inside and pokes outwards. The biggest problem with this design is the position of these bearings. In this orientation, as you tighten them down, it changes the distance between the bearings. If you change the distance between the bearings, the whole lot just clamps down and doesn't go anywhere. So let's move on to design three. This is the first part of design number three. Just some nut traps on the inside. The bearing holders are slightly different. They're only mounted one side as opposed to two. And the bearings are now very thin brass. Well, the bronze coated steel. So this is the three belt tightening hex head nuts for this part here. Again, that's the same. The other parts that are the same is this mounting on the front. So the stepper motor still mounts in the same sort of way and the screws come in the side. Very similar. This part's still the same. Belts go through, tighten with zip ties. The most significant change is these two ends. The bearings now sit on the ends like this. So as you tighten them down, it doesn't change this distance here, it's changing that distance there. Now with this design, it's very thick because I was originally using this size stepper, a monstrous 40, 30 mil stepper or something, which with a tightening extruder is way over the top because it has a five to one gear ratio, a three to one gear ratio. So you just don't need that size stepper motor. One of the other problems I had with this design is that when you mount it to the sort of extruder assembly on the X gantry, you notice that these don't really need to be this far out. I want to try and move them in because the further out this is, the further the belt is, the further the belt loop sticks out, and you're just starting to lose distance on that X axis. So let's have a look at the next design. You can see it's significantly thinner than this. Well, in parts it's thinner. Down here it's thinner. Up here it's the same. So what's special about this one? Well, because the motor is much thinner, it's positioned very differently. It's positioned further back. It's all because of that property I want to have where the center of mass of the stepper, the heaviest part on the X gantry, 
should be aligned between the rails. This part I've made significantly smaller, just so it fits within the gap here, the, rather than sticking out on the surface like the other ones did. The other ones sort of sat at that point, these ones, this one slips all the way in. Uh, again, the bearings are the small uh, bronze covered steel. The most significant addition I made at this stage was this set of holes here and the same set of holes here. You might be able to see these four nut traps. This is basically a modular system for adding parts to the X gantry. So as your stepper sits here with your extruder on the front, I'm going to be mounting a fan on one side using a couple of the holes and a Z-axis probe on the other side, again, using a couple of holes. That still me, that leaves me a couple of holes either side still for mounting whatever else I like. So let's have a look at the final design. I only have one of these bearing clamps, but they're both very similar. You can probably see it all still looks very similar to this one. Slightly reduced size, slightly reduced bulk. But I mean, the modular nut system, the X gantry tightening, there's a few extra nut placements around the top. So you can see there's five positions here. I'm only using two, but since I'm gonna make this design probably open for others to use, there's just other nut placements in case you can't get the same bearings that I used. In this design, you can see the bearing hole is much larger. I got some, well, I got a free sample of Iger's bearings, which I'm going to be using. And since they're significantly larger than the small bushings that I had before, I had to greatly increase the size of this part. So as you can see, if this was like this, is much bigger. So this clamp just means the bearing can stick out the bottom and I still get that same 60 mil distance between the axles. It does hold really quite tightly, so that's good. One thing you might be thinking as you look at this is how do you access the screws? Well, there's two holes up the top here. For this one, this is the longer one, this sits at the top. You put the two screws in, tighten it all the way down, making sure it's about straight to the, the top edge which the screws will tend to straighten up anyway. You then put the bearings in. Then for the bottom one, let's use the same, although it's not the same, it's slightly shorter. You only put a single bearing in. So the bearing sits in the middle between the holes and you can still access the holes when everything's in there. Even when the rod's in place, you can still access those screw holes behind, which means you can adjust that bottom one just slightly, just up and down, left and right a little bit, just to get that position right for smooth movement along the rails. So that's about it for the X gantry design. I quite like this piece. It's sort of quite complex, but also quite simple at the same time. I've enjoyed making this design. It's developed quite a long way from this to this. I mean, you can see certain similarities, definitely. Like, I mean, these look very similar and this three hole set looks quite similar. But the rest of the design, the way it's sort of molded and formed out, and this has turned out to be quite a simple overall shape, but with lots of detail within it, which I quite like. I'm quite happy with that. If you want to watch another video of mine, click here and here to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Like if you liked it. This has been CRT.